uh, you should see my screen now. So let's quickly recap what we've been talking about last time. So the functional programming, it's all about the function composition. We talked that actually while programming, what we're doing, we're composing the functions. And actually we can achieve the same goal of function composition without using the object-oriented patterns like classes and inheritance and encapsulation and polymorphism and so on. So we can use just direct uh, low-level function composition, which brings us closer to mathematics than the programming. And FRP, functional reactive programming, is the uh, combination of reactive programming ideas and functional programming ideas. What is reactive programming? Uh, the main abstraction is an observable. Observable is the value that changes in time, uh, data stream, let's say so. It can be called, uh, uh, in different libraries it's called different. It can be called cell, uh, because the classical example of this would be the cell from Excel table, which is programmed to uh, output certain value based on other cells. It could be named signal also, it could be named observable, or it could be named stream, but idea is always the same, that it's the value that changes in time. Observable is like a promise also that can execute multiple times. Okay, now we also said that observable is also a functor, and functor, functors are abstractions to do with functions composition more efficiently. efficiently. And functor is actually the value with a context. And we said that functor is something that can be mapped over. So array is functor, promise is functor, and observable is of course functor. And even the function itself is functor. And also we said that there is something that's called a monad, and it's the functor with possibility to lift in, in this context and also flatten from the context. So that uh, Observable happens to be a monad also, and as well as the promise. Okay, so <clears throat> thanks to those two abstractions, we can compose functions that have context. So uh, when it comes to observable, the context is of course the fact that the value is not available right now. And we don't know whether it would be available soon or not, and whether it would be a change changed uh, or not. So thanks to this abstraction of observable, we can chain uh, our observables into the applications. And that would be like a mathematical combination of them. So when something changes here, for example, everything changes automatically. And I don't even consider the case when something is not changed because something, 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 like, uh, like it would be with the mutable state. So I can express my applications and my functionality as combinations of those observable streams. And that's, that's really cool because it makes everything much simpler. So here it is, uh, here is an example of non-FRP way to uh, do stuff. When you have the observable, uh, like you call some get data method for, of some service, then you subscribe to it, and then you start to do some stuff, like check the conditions, do some transformations, and then only in subscribe, you change the state somehow. And here is the more FRP way to do this. As you can see, I have the pipe, which do, does the transformations, and then only uh, I subscribe only to get the result and then change the state somehow. But in Angular, actually, when you think about this, in Angular, you have to mutate the component state through this because Angular actually based on uh, classes as well as React. They both use classes to express the idea of components. And actually, that... Uh, not 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 very FRP. So both Angular and React are not very FRP. So in Angular, actually, this would be kind of okay because there is no way to us to uh, change the state without mutating this, you know. 
So yeah, Angular has flows in FRP sense. But actually we can deal with that just by keeping everything as clear as we can and also by leveraging the Redux store and async pipe. We'll take closer look at it next time on our next meeting dedicated to Redux and NGRX. So in Angular, this also, uh, we have this FRP way, but in Angular, actually, this also can be considered as FRP way. It's still clear, uh, still clear data flow. I can see that I uh, get some request, then I take it while uh, the component is, al is alive, then I tap, which means do the side effect. So tap is like do, uh, it's alias for do, and it means do nothing with this uh, emitted value in this step, but instead do some uh, side effect. As you can see, we check whether the model is opened, and if it is, we show the preloader here. So it's kind of fi fine because we, it's, it's still clear and we can see it uh, as the transformation, uh, uh, you know, the list of transformations. So that's kind of fine. And actually, unfortunately, it's the only way in Angular to do stuff uh, unless you use the async pipe. It's a little bit tricky and we will talk about this uh, next time. However, existence of mutable state outside of observable is something that goes against traditional FRP ideas. So something in Angular and React actually goes against the traditional FRP ideas and FRP ideas in general. But there are frameworks like Cycle.js that are actually based on pure FRP and they provide this feeling of being purely, uh, everything is observable and your application totally and fully is described as the uh, composition of transform data transformations. And it feels really good. Uh, and you can actually do the same thing in Angular, but partially. So Angular not fully based on it, but you can like break up your functionality in small pieces and do in same manner. And to feel this approach and to try out this approach, we can do this with just vanilla RxJS. And we're going to do this now uh, because then we can apply the achieved knowledge in Angular. So we're going to try it out in pure RxJS so that we understand this and can apply our knowledge in Angular also. So let's try it out by writing a game. I think that it's the best uh, approach to try out something. And yeah, game is something that has, video game is something that has a lot of external state and it's actually, actually interesting how to solve uh, stuff that we usually solve by introducing external state, how to solve that stuff with, uh, with pure FRP and functional approach, sorry. So I created the sample project. Uh, first of all, we will develop the game, which is uh, Snake. And it's actually my uh, tutorial is based on this one this article that I actually shared with you guys but if you follow this article you saw that actually it's not clear enough it doesn't work in some places it's not rx uh, js6 based and it has some errors so and also yeah as I said it's not clear enough so it's based on this but it's slightly different and I will explain you everything in much more detail than there. So let's take a look at our simple, simple project. This is the first step. So uh, we have the package JSON, it's really, really simple, simple webpack configuration with TypeScript loader and HTML loader. Now in fancy, uh, the entry is in index.ts. Let's take a look at index.ts and at index.html. So index.html is pretty simple. And yeah, let's take a look at the game itself. I forgot. So here is what we're going to develop today. As you can see, I am a snake and I'm eating apples and it, I have the score here and I can bump in myself and then the game stops. Really cool. 
So let's start. Um, as you can see, here uh, happens some stuff regarding Canvas. Let's take a look at the helper functions. It will use the uh, HTML5 Canvas to draw our scene, which is, uh, for now, is only the background. And now let's take a look at the program side. So we need to have in every, when tackling any problem with FRP and RxJS in particular, we need to think about the inputs that we have. In this case, with game, we have one input for sure. It's from the keyboard, but uh, I mean the input from the user, but also we have the input stream, which is uh, the interval. So you, if you take a look at the original game, you will see that everything happens with certain intervals. So the snake doesn't immediately cross the uh, game board and it takes some uh, interval or step to uh, render the scene and render what happens on the scene. So let's call this interval tick and we have some speed with which this interval happens. And for now, that's pretty much it. So let's just output this tick and render it out. Let's take a look at the render function it will just render the background and the score, which no, it's a tick. And this is also a tick. Yep. And this is a tick. Okay. So let's take a look at this first uh, version of our snake game. And So, so far, everything is really simple. We have only the stick, and our game uh, state on, is only represented with the stick, and we uh, subscribe to it and render it. And here it is. We get our tick on our uh, game board. That's great. Let's move on and add one by one stuff. So, the next step would be just a hat. So I said already that we have the uh, second input is the key down from a keyboard. I mean, every time when user presses the key, we need to react some, somehow on this. And when you think about this snake that we have on board, and imagine just the head of this snake. So just forget about it, its body. You will uh, understand that this head has only the direction and actually nothing else for now. So we have the head only with the direction. And this direction is actually based on uh, input from the keyboard. Because when I press keys on keyboard, uh, the direction of head changes. So I have this key downstream here. And now I start to pipe it. So let's talk about this piping thing. It's, it it uh, appeared in um, RxJS starting from version 5, I believe. And it's something that is generally was called laddable abrader. But if you Google it, you will see that stop like naming it laddable because RxJS team uh, suggests to name, name it more uh, accurately pipeable abrader. So it's something about chaining and problems that we have with, with chaining. As you remember, I explained this stuff for uh, the low dash actually. So that in low dash, we ha have the possibility actually to chain our uh, array into the, well, you know, map it, then maybe filter it, then maybe reduce it, and so on and so on. And then in result, I get the value of it so that all those functions are chained and like uh, composed. But that was bad because, uh, well, to the same reason why it's bad uh, with RxGS, because when you need to import uh, some, something, one function uh, in separate, it's much better for tree, tree shaking than when you import all the RxJS library uh, and uh, take the functions from there. And also, it's much, much easier to, well, for example, to reuse your uh, operators. 
So for example, we have this source here and we pipe in it somehow, but uh, I can easily take, for example, this filter and name it as a const odd, for example, or even, yeah. And then use it like, like this uh, in my pipe. And actually, in certain cases, it really simplifies the readability of your uh, program. So you can extract out functions, name them, and combine them uh, as you wish, and make everything like uh, much more readable. So apart from uh, apart from tree shaking and optimizations, there is this readability. So. That's actually what we're doing here. We're importing the operators and chain them or, uh, well, compose them into one function. So I take those key, key downs here. Then I map every key down to the direction. Let's take a look at the directions constant. Here it is. So depending on uh, the keyboard uh, key uh, code, I get this arrow for now. Okay, I mapped it, then I filter for through the value, then I start with initial direction, it would be uh, 40 for now, and I say that it must be distinct until changed. It means that this uh, observable won't emit anything until the value changes, so it will emit only unique values. And again, I subscribed to uh, direct, now this time I subscribe to directions and output it uh, on the R game board. Let's take a look how it looks. So again, so far everything is simple. We have ticks and key downs and also we have direction stream derived from the key down based on key down. And we subscribe to this direction stream and render out the arrow to the board. So here you can see the arrow, and when I press the keys on the keyboard, uh, the arrow changes its position. That's its direction. It's it, exactly what we wanted, but you can see that I can change actually to the the uh, direction to completely opposite. And when you take a, take a look at the original game, you you will see that actually I can't do this because it's it's like the forbidden uh, movement because. Now when I'm moving down, I can't just press up and my snake won't, won't uh, you know, uh, go up. So I, I even draw this rule, uh, yeah. So you can see that I have a snake, I have the apple, and I can move uh, towards, uh, to the left, to the right, but not in the opposite direction. And we will achieve this using this great scan function uh, operator that we have in RxJS. It's really crucial to understand this operator because it's actually the core of uh, ngRx library, uh, which we will discuss next time. So it's crucial to understand it right now. What it is, it's the Redux, um, Redux reduce function actually, but yeah, let's take a look at this um, next direction. Yeah, but instead of uh, emitting value only when the uh, we when the uh, original uh, source uh, observable completes, it will emit value every time when the source uh, observable emits. So let's recall how reduce works. We have the accumulator. Uh, we have we pass the function that takes two arguments, the accumulated value and current value, and this function should return the new value. And also we have to pass the default accumulated value. For example, uh, when it comes to sum of uh, array of numbers, we have accumulated value, current value, and when then we just uh, sum them up, and the default value will be zero, and that would be the sum function. So it's pretty much the same. We have the stream uh, that emits values and we have this scan which takes this function and it has the accumulated value 
the new value. Accumulated value uh, is called previous here because, well, actually it's previous. The next value or new value is the one that is accumulated right now. And we can like compare those two values. And if they are opposite, I will return the previous value. So I won't change anything. So thanks to this function, I can literally transform my observable to anything. I can turn my observable uh, from array into sum of uh, the uh, elements of those ar this array, or I can, for example, do this uh, like filtering stuff. But if I used filter here, uh, it won't emit anything. But in this case, it would emit the value, but the previous value. So after I uh, uncommented this line, let's take a look at the result. And now I'm trying to press the up button. It doesn't work, but it works for everything else. So I can't just do the opposite. I can't uh, change the direction to opposite. Thanks to this uh, scan function it's really really powerful so and now uh, the last thing that we need to do is we're not interested in uh, arrows actually we're more interested in coordinates uh, right and this would mean that we need to change our functions a little bit yeah and now the render So yeah, the same thing, but instead of arrow, we have X and Y coordinates and it just displays. And it doesn't let me to uh, set the value to uh, set the direction to opposite. Okay, uh, so far so good. Let's take a look at the marble diagram of this. So as you can see, we have this key, key downs and we map them to uh, the value. We, we filter the value uh, so that it's truthy and we scan for uh, to uh, replace the value to the previous one if we set it try to set it to the opposite and we say that it must be unique value and so in result on directions directions stream we have the, this resulting value okay let's move uh, on and now let's add the length to our head. So, yeah, let's take a look at the next version. Yeah, so everything stays the same, but now we add this snake length uh, observable. It's based on this increased length uh, behavior subject because we actually need to have the possibility to increase the length of the snake. So the snake of the length will depend on this increased length uh, behavior subject. So what is subject? Let's, let's clear this out what the subject is. So the subject is a special type of observable. So this is observable and it's, they made it to for multicasting so that I can take uh, some observable, then I have the subject, I subscribe to this observable, and then I have, I can subscribe other observables to this subject. And this subject is like a fork that multicasts this uh, uh, events to all the observables. So that's exactly the reason why we have subjects, to multicast those uh, emitted values so um, you can see that i'm multicasting to multiple observables that means that subjects are hot observables by uh, default what does it mean uh, hot and cold observable well just remember that hot observable is like a live uh, streaming of video in i don't know on youtube right so it's live streaming and if you missed the start you won't get it right so nobody will wait for you and you will get only what you uh, see after you connected 
and the code observable is like recorded video. When you uh, open it, you can replay it right from the start and you get all your e uh, emitted events from this code observable. So this subject observable would be by, uh, by default the hot one because if somebody is subscribed to it, it's obvious that somebody else, uh, if somebody else subscribes to it, uh, we don't need to redo this request, for example, if it's a HTTP request and so on. So if you have the code observable, which does the HTTP request, be sure that when you subscribe to it multiple times, your request will be uh, repeated. And that's actually what subject is uh, solving, right? So every subject is observable, but every subject is also an observer. So you, so you can uh, subscribe your subject to other observables, for example. So it's like a fork, you see. You can subscribe it to other observables to fork out the events that uh, they send. Or also you can uh, just fire the, emit the values to the subject directly by calling next, because it's also the observer. So it makes subjects really powerful mechanism to work with observables. And yeah, it's really great. So there, will, there are uh, various kind of subjects. Let's, let's quickly uh, skim through them. Behavior subject is the most popular one. We will use it in Angular very often. Uh, uh, yeah, it's something that is useful for representing value over the time. Behavior subject has a value, default value that, that it will emit from the start. And well, it will repeat the, uh, well, we said that it's the code uh, hot observable by uh, default. So behavior subject will emit the latest value of this uh, hot observable to every newly subscribed observer. Uh, so it will re-emit the value. It's really cool and actually it, it's ideal for representing yeah, values that change over time. You actually, you can even access the value of the behavior subject uh, just like you would in the uh, more um, imperative programming, but sometimes it's useful. Replay subject will replay certain amount of the latest events that were emitted because of this, because of hot uh, observable, because of the fact that subject is a hot observable. And the async subject uh, is the variant when only last value uh, of uh, observable is sent and only when execu execution completes. I don't know where you can use this, but yeah, possibly. Of course, you can say that uh, you can use share operator instead of uh, behavior subject, for example, and it's true because in RxJS, well, you can use different approaches to solve the same problems. So in this case, we have the behavior subject that says, hey, when you emit me, the length of our snake will be increased by uh, whenever you pass into uh, the, your event. So we have this increased length and snake length is based on increase length subject and we take this subject we scan it again and in this scan function we have the current uh, the accumulated value which is the snake length it starts with default snake length which is taken from constants and let's see it's three and so every time this increase length emits, this scan function fires, it has the snake length, current snake length uh, from the start, it would be three, right? And it has the new value that was emitted, which is grow, uh, named grow. Uh, and well, the new value would be snake length plus grow. And this is how we derive the snake length from this increase length uh, behavior subject. And also it's really easy to derive the score value from this because we just take this increase length behavior subject, then we skip the first 
a meeting of this because it would be the first one. It's not because of Apple, you know, it's because of initializing of uh, our snake. We start with zero and we also use scan here again, as you can see, it's really powerful. And we take the accumulated value, which is score, and just increase it with the points per Apple constant, which is for now one. Then we combine the latest values from three streams that we have right now, direction, snake, snake length, and score, and just render it out on the scene. Let's take a look at this. Okay, so let's quickly skim through. We have the tick and key down. We have directions derived from key down. We have increased length behavior subject, snake length based on it, score also based on it. And scene combines everything in one. So as you can see, I have the direction, I have the length, and I have the score. Uh, length is by default three, and score is for now, of course, zero. So we are moving to, yeah, let's take a look at the marble diagrams. As you can see in original uh, article, uh, the, um, well, author uh, decided to name this behavior subject um, increase length as just length. And it doesn't make sense to me, and that's why it. Also, they used share here. I don't know why they decided to use this because it's also already the uh, behavior subject. There is no need to share the subject. So we have the snake length and based on snake length, uh, yeah, we have the score. I guess this marble diagram is not the best because it's, yeah, but it, yeah, you understand everything. I, I, I. I, uh, I'm sure. So let's proceed. And now we add the body to our head. And it's, it's going to be the last variant before the game itself, you know, the, the final. So let's take a look at it. And what's added here is only this snake thing. So we say that we take tick and we pipe it. And on every tick emitted, we take the latest value from direction and snake length. And we scan it with the move function. And the default value for this uh, scan would be generate snake. So let's take a look. Uh, now we're interested only in move and generate snake functions. Let's take a look. So generate snake will only produce the array of X and uh, of objects which contain the uh, coordinates. So it would be just plain, uh, you know, our snake. And move is a little bit more complicated. So it's the it's for scan function, right? So it's the same reduce pattern. We have a current value, and we have the new value. So we have the accumulated value and the new value. The new value is already uh, destructured here. Here, So we have the direction and snake length. And if you take a look here, actually, yeah, we are mapping it to direction and snake length. So we take this direction and we take the snake length. And also we have our, snake, our current snake. So we take the head, we move the head into our direction and we remove, cut up the tail of our snake and combine everything and when you think think about it would be actually uh, yeah moving of the snake so you take uh, take one piece from the tail and add one piece uh, to head in this direction that we have and also we need to map the results uh, to wrap the bounds of our uh, game board and that's pretty much it so let's Take a look at it. So as you can see, we might have a lot of attempts to use the global uh, shared state here. Like for example, instead of this scan, I could use map 
and I could check out the value. And if the value is something, then I have the var uh, previous direction here and something. And then in this map, I mutate this previous direction and I check if it's not something, if it's opposite, you know? So every time you can have the temptation to, you know, use the global scope. But instead, as you can see, everything is kept inside of observables here. So there is no state at all, we, we can say this. Uh, everything is described as pure functions. And yeah, here is the result. We have our snake. I can't change the direction to the opposite. I can only move like this. And yeah, it also uh, wraps the bounds of the board. And let's move to, yeah, let's take a look at the uh, marble diagram. So we have the ticks, we have the directions, and on every tick we have uh, the we take the direction and snake length uh, and scan them to calculate the snake and yeah that's scan them with the move function to calculate the snake and that's pretty much it take the snake uh, and direction and snake length and score and render out it to the scene okay so the last step would be head, body, and apples. So let's take a look at the last final version of our game, which is just snake. And what's changed? Uh, yeah, now we have the apples. They are derived from the snake uh, observable. And because each time uh, when snake eats the apple, when it's size changed uh we need to well uh, react on this so let's take a look at first of all generate apples function again you can see that we use scan for this but because this is really far powerful thing okay so generate apples will just generate the apples at random position Rand random coordinates and yeah, it. So we have the apples, which is accumulated value, and we have the snake here. Yeah. So we because we take the snake uh, and pipe it. So we have the snake here and the apples here, and we take the head and we filter out the apples that are not uh, inter uh, intersect with uh, the head and we figure out whether some apple was eaten. And then if it was, we return the completely new array uh, without the eaten apples and with the added apples. As you can see, everything is in immutable manner. So I'm not mut mutating the apples and snake in any case, and it wouldn't work because RxJS and FRP actually makes sure that you use uh, uh pure functions because it would wouldn't just work every time every of this operator return the completely new value okay and now we have the eaten apples um, i don't think that we need this at all I guess that, that that would be it. I know that it looks like it couldn't be, but it is. So we have less than around 80 lines of code and some <clears throat> utilitary functions. Oh no, there is no score, so we needed this. Yeah, we needed this because it will trigger, it will call the increase length uh, behavior subject. Yeah. So we have our game and yeah, collision with our own bod body is, uh, we calculate it within the move function, I guess. Oh no. 
Okay, where is the collision? Yeah, check collision in it function. Oh, I don't like this, but anyway, it works. <laughs> we can move it out from it function to somewhere else. So yeah, and we can collide with our own body here. Okay, so we're done with the game. And how to apply this in our day-to-day -day work with Angular? Well, first of all, make sure that you understand this subject thing behavior subject thing, cold versus hot observables, and so on, piping, and so on. Uh, rely on observable streams in favor of state mutation. You will, well, this come with practice. You will understand how to do this, how to think in terms of observables instead of in terms of uh, shared state. Think in terms of observables, not, not concrete values. So you start to think, in terms of values that change in time and that you not uh, you're not aware whether it is available right now and it starts to make sense more and more uh, well you just need to start doing doing this keep your state inside of observables as much as possible and use the async pipe we'll talk about the async pipe later so in other words you can break up your uh, tasks that you have into this kind of stream piped streams right right uh, right inside of your components and you can combine these two approaches of the object oriented based component and this kind of small streams which are described as uh, pipes of operators uh, slash pure functions because it makes everything much simpler to understand and eventually to maintain and well, it makes programming much more fun, I'd say. So it, we will have the continuation of this uh, talk. Uh, next time we will talk about uh, NGRX and this scanning thing a little bit more and how to apply this in Angular even more. So if you think, if you want to practice, I can propose you some bonus tasks. I will share the code of the game, of course, and you can like extend it and maybe even show me the, your very end. So add game difficulty level by increasing speed, the second one. Add different types of apples, plus one, plus three, maybe change the colors and so on. And advance it. Add possibility to play for two players on one keyboard, like hot seat. Uh, keep everything as dry as possible so reuse stuff this is really advanced thing and yeah if you want that would be really great i i assure that it would be helpful for you and some literature so original article i showed this but don't rely on it too much uh, good docs on uh, rxgs we have a lot of docs out there about rxgs but this is like some of them are outdated though those are the best Hot versus cold observables by Ben Lash, one of creators of RxJS, and RxJS subjects for human beings. A great article bar by Nathaniel Basel. Uh, it's just yeah. Again, you have a lot of articles about subjects are out there, but I I, I picked the the best one, to my opinion. So, any questions?